Welcome to this video lecture on stresses in composite bar. So a composite bar may be defined as bar made up of two or more different material joined together in such a manner that the system extend or contract as a one unit equally when subjected to tension or compression. You can see in this image that this uh, inner bar is of different material and this outer bar which is the second number is of different material which is uh, joined together and this whole bar composite bar is subjected to one constant load uh, constant load and at the one end the bar is fixed so whenever this type of assembly is get subjected to a force then if you observe the diagram the extension or contraction of the bar is being equal and the total external load of the, on the bar is equal to the sum of the load carried by the different material means this total load is get shared by the inner bar also and the outer bar also but we don't know the exact amount of shared load by the both the bar so we can apply the relation that the total load will be get by shared by, will get shared by this bar 1 and bar 2 okay so we can when you analyze the composite bar we will use the first relation that the extension or contraction of the bar is being equal means either this bar will get elongate as a whole and either it will contract as a whole so, and the second relation we can use the total external load on the bar is equal means equal to the sum of the load carried by the different material. means total load is equal to uh, load taken by the one first bar and load taken by the second bar means summation of that load okay. so here p1 is a load carried by the bar 1 and a1 is the cross sectional area of the bar after that sigma 1 which is nothing but the stress produced in the bar 1 and e1 is the young model young's modulus of bar 1 similarly p2 a2 sigma 2 e2 are the corresponding values of bar 2 then the P is a total load on the composite bar. L is the length of composite bar and delta L is the elongation of the composite bar. So as I discussed in the previous slide, we know that the total load is get shared by the two bars. We use the relation then total load is equal to load taken by the bar 1 plus load taken by the bar 2. And we can find out the stress in the bar 1 sigma 1 is equal to p1 upon a1 that is force per unit area respective area of the bar and also we can calculate strain in bar 1 which is epsilon so strain is equal to stress upon modulus of elasticity then we can again put in the strain formula the value of stress sigma 1 is equal to p1 upon a1 then epsilon becomes p1 upon a1 into even. Then similarly we can find out elongation in bar 1 that is the formula for elongation delta L is equal to PL upon A. So respect to deformation in the bar 1 we can calculate the respect to force P1 the length of the both the bars are same so it is L divided by the respect to cross sectional area A1 and respect to modulus of elasticity. Similarly, elongation in the bar 2 also we can find out delta L2 is equal to P2 into L divided by A2 into E2 that is respective force then length is same divided by respect to cross sectional area and respect to modulus of elasticity. Then as a composite bar when a composite bar is subjected to constant force the elongation or we can say deformation in both the bar will remain same because composite bar will expand or contract as a whole so we can write down delta l1 is equal to delta l2 then we can equate these two formulas p1 into l divided by a1 into e1 is equal to p2 into l divided by a2 into e2 so we can get after cancellation of length then we can uh, you, uh, get the relation p1 upon a1 you can put sigma 1 so sigma 1 upon e1 is equal to sigma 2 upon e2 then also we have one relation that P is equal to P1 plus P2 and uh, we can also write down that for P force is equal to sigma 1 
into a1 plus sigma 2 into a2 that is force is equal to uh, stress is equal to force per unit area so we can write a force is equal to stress into area also and the ratio of e1 upon e2 that is if you take the ratio of this e1 upon e2 sigma 1 upon sigma 2 is equal to e1 upon e2 then that ratio is called as modular ratio of the two materials so the, when you uh, uh, compo when you analyze the composite bar this modular ratio is given for the particular uh, composite so this is all about the analysis of composite bar let us take the first numerical of composite bar a reinforced concrete column 200 mm in diameter is designed to carry an ax axial co compressive load of 300 kN. Determine the required area of reinforcing steel if the allowable stress are 6 MPa and 120 MPa for the concrete and steel respectively. Use modulus of elasticity for copper is uh, sorry column is 14 GPa and for steel it is 200 GPa. This is the given diagram. So you can see in this diagram, this is a circular column of diameter 200 mm, which is get subjected to axial compressive load of 300 kN. Then we have to find out the required area of reinforcing steel if the allowable stresses are given in the steel and concrete. So um, this modulus of elasticity for uh, concrete is given for 14 GPa and for steel it is given 200 GPa. Okay. So this delta copper, this when you analyze the composite bar, we know that whenever any composite is get subjected to constant load, uh, it will expand or contract as a whole so that we can say elongation in both the material will remain same. So we can use the first relation that uh, elongation in concrete is equal to elongation in steel is equal to total elongation. So we can use that delta L formula for that. So PL upon A for concrete is equal to PL upon A for steel. Then P upon A we can replace by the stress. So stress into length divided by E is equal to stress into length upon, divided by E for steel. So we know that the modulus of elasticity for steel and for concrete is known to us. So by putting this value, we will get uh, length is common. So it will get cancelled. So we'll get the relation 100 into stress in concrete is equal to 7 into stress in steel. So it's a, it's a relation which we, uh, between these two stresses in these two materials. Then we can have a allowable stress also. So allowable stress in uh, concrete and steel is given. So concrete is 6 MPa and for steel it is 120 MPa. So it, it's an allowable stress. So we, were, we have to find out the actual stress in concrete. So that's what, for that we can apply the relation that uh, the one material will get subjected to allowable stress first so this way when sigma st is equal to 120 mpa then we can find out the respective value of concrete or we can also take uh, sigma uh, ct means uh, for sigma for stress in concrete is equal to 6 mpa and we can find out the respective value of stress uh, uh, allowable stress in steel also vice versa so we'll take first uh, relation that when sigma st is 120 mpa what will be the respective stress in concrete so by putting this value of sigma uh, ST in uh, this relation will get 100 into sigma concrete is equal to 7 into 120 MPa. We will get the value of sigma concrete is equal to 8.4 GPa. Sorry, sorry, it's MPa, 8.4 MPa, and which is greater than the allowable value of concrete that is 6 MPa. So we cannot take this uh, combination of the stresses, which is not okay. So we'll go for the next uh, combination that when sigma concrete is 6 MPa what will be the respective value of stress in steel. So by putting this value of uh, allowable stress in concrete in this relation, we will get 100 into sig uh, 6 is equal to 7 into sigma st. So we will get the sigma st is equal to 85.71 MPa and which is less than the allowable value of stress in steel, which is 120 MPa given. So it's okay. This combination is okay. We can take this values of stresses that is when use 6 sigma concrete is 6 MPa and sigma steel is equal to 85.71 MPa. Okay, so this is the uh, combination of stresses we can use for further solution. Then we have a relation that the total load is get shared by the both the material because we don't know the amount of uh, load taken by concrete and amount of load taken by steel. So we can use this re relation between this load is stress taken by steel plus stress taken by concrete is equal to total 
uh, it's not stress it's a load load taken by steel plus load taken by concrete is equal to 300 kilonewton that is total load then we can replace this load by the formula stress into area so respect to stress multiplied by respect to area plus stress into area is equal to 300 newton by putting this again values of uh, stresses sigma st uh, ast is we have to find out then sigma concrete then area of concrete so when you calculate the area of concrete actually then you have to uh, you have to uh, first take area of column minus area of steel so if you subtract the steel area from the respect to column area then we can get the concrete area so area of uh, column is 1 by 4 into pi into 200 square minus area of steel which is uh, no, that we have to find out so minus ast is equal to 300 into uh, 1000 that is the load is given kilo newton so we have to find out in uh, taken in newton then again we got here 79.8 uh, 71 ast plus 16000 pi is equal to 30000 then by this whole equation is in terms of ASD, then we will get the respective value of area of steel that is 1398.9 mm square. Thank you.